nature. A perfectly balanced masterpiece of unimaginable complexity. The great dance of life, where every creature, great and small, plays a pivotal role in... <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> that guy's having a bad day. Sorry, where was I? Oh yeah, every creature, great and small, plays a pivotal role in the great ecological story. From the majestic elk to the elusive and cunning... <laughs> oh, 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 that's gonna leave a mark. <laughs> Okay, maybe not every animal is majestic, but there is a purpose and, and an intelligence behind every... <laughs> okay, 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 bad example. But, but animals are way more intelligent than we... <laughs> Except for that guy. <laughs> I guess he didn't have his echo of this. Oh, and that one too. Oh, my goodness, nature is having a day. <laughs> oh, 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 that poor... <laughs> <laughs> Animals are stupid. About a year ago or so, I did a video on the world's smartest animals, where I talked about how some animals like corvids and octopuses show a level of intelligence that's, uh, weirdly human. Like, for example, when a crow dies, its group will actually come together and sort of investigate what happened. Kind of like a... Corvid CSI or something. Looks like this case is for the birds. Yeah, yeah and actually regarding octopuses, uh, a recent plan that a guy had in the Canary Islands to build a farm for octopuses to raise them for food, uh, it's come under severe backlash lately because, you know, they're kind of known as such intelligent creatures now. It sort of feels wrong. Because in our minds, as humans, we regard intelligence as a virtue, maybe the, the highest of all virtues. We rank an animal's importance by how smart they are, how much they're, you know, like us. It's a little narcissistic when you think about it. Because when it comes down to it, intelligence is just an evolutionary adaptation, just like all animal traits. You know, you, you wouldn't look down on one bird because it's a different color than another bird, but when it comes to intelligence, we do exactly that. So for some animals, the environments that they evolved in, the predators that hunted them, or the prey that they hunted, meant that nature selected for intelligence and they got smarter. But for some other animals, the opposite is true. Intelligence played little to no part in their survival. In fact, for some, a bigger, more energy-intensive brain would just take resources away from other parts of the body that really needed it. So let's flip the script in this video. Instead of showering the A students with all the glory, let's, let's give some love to the the underachievers, it feels safe to say. So first of all, we kind of need to establish what exactly we mean when we say an animal has uh, intelligence or that an animal's dumb for that matter. I mean, we're looking at this through human eyes after all. It's not necessarily brain size. I mean, a wasp has a brain about the size of the ball and a ballpoint pen, but it's still smart enough to chase me around the yard and cut off roots to my back door, leaving me stranded in the yard for hours. Oh, and look at the jellyfish. They don't have a brain at all. I mean, does smart and dumb even apply to them? Now, you could apply the word dumb to mean animals with weird or useless body parts, like the T-Rex and its stupid little arms. But there's a lot of cases of weird anatomy that aren't necessarily dumb. I mean, great gray owls are born with claw-like structures at the rest of their wings that have no use whatsoever, or hell, the human appendix, for that matter. Some animals might be considered dumb because they can only survive in a very specific environment. Congratulations, dummy! You're the apex predator in a tiny cave! And sadly, many of these animals are dying out because that one very specific niche that they've filled is now changing because of human encroachment or changing climate or whatever, and they've evolved so specifically that they can't figure out how to continue their species when it changes. Sad, but still. Dumb. The point is, there's a lot of different metrics we can use to define what a dumb animal is, so the ones on this list, to be fair, are not really apples to apples comparisons. Regardless, these keep making list after list for being the dumbest of the dumb, so here we go. Let's start with cockapaws, which I'm pretty sure I'm saying wrong, ironic, in a video about dumb animals. These are nocturnal flightless parrots found in New Zealand, and they're adorable. They're actually like super really cute, but the thing is, they evolved in a place with no predators and plenty of food. So they didn't really develop any kind of defensive strategies. So if you were to walk up and say, scare a cockapaw, it would just kind of sit there, just freeze, stand completely still, or it might climb up a tree and jump out, which is a problem because it can't fly, so it just kind of falls to the ground. 
They rarely mate, and the males are known to go around and just basically hump anything that moves when it can't attract a female. They were abundant in New Zealand before the humans arrived, but the numbers decreased over time because the animals that the humans brought with them were able to catch the birds really easily because they just kind of stood there and froze. And by animals, I mean cats. I'm talking about cats. Conservation efforts began in 1894, which has helped keep them around, but there's really only about 294 kakapo alive today. Now, I should say that some places that I looked for information on this say that they're actually fairly intelligent. They are parrots, and parrots in general are intelligent. Apparently, they all have very distinct personalities, which kind of is a, a sign of intelligence, but they kept coming up on all these lists of dumbest animals that we found, so we included it here. Next up is sloths. Kakapos aren't the only animals that can hold themselves completely still. That's also kind of the sloths thing. Are they cute? Yes. Does Kristen Bell have an unhealthy fascination with them? Yes. Are they dumb? Very. Sloths are found in tropical rainforests where they spend about eight to 10 hours a day sleeping in trees. And about once every eight days, they make their way to the ground to defecate. And when it crawls back up the tree, they can often fall to the ground and die. And the whole thing about sloths moving slowly is no joke. They move with top speeds of 1.8 to 2.4 meters per minute. Just uh, for reference, that's four times slower than a tortoise. You know how you're always winding up behind some 90 year old going 20 miles an hour on the interstate? That's a sloth. They are so slow and lazy that one of the seven deadly sins is named after them. That's a good movie for the kids. All sloths go to hell. They move so slowly, in fact, that algae and fungus collects in their fur. But this is actually a good thing. It's actually helpful to them because their main predator is the harpy eagle, which no sloth could ever outrun. So its algae kind of camouflages them and their stillness makes them kind of blend in with the trees, which is kind of smart. They're so dumb, they're smart. Speaking of lazy animals, let's talk about pandas. Like pandas kind of became the symbol of the conservation movement because they're endangered and they're cute, but they're kind of a terrible symbol because they're so dumb. Pandas are the worst. There, I said it. I, this is the part that's gonna piss everybody off, but I don't care. Can we please be done with these ridiculous animals? First of all, I don't think they even wanna exist. Have you ever noticed it's like global news every time a panda cub is born? That's how little interest they have in continuing as a species. Pandas adapted to just kind of barely get by in one very unique place in the world. And then when that place changed, they were basically just like, eh, I guess I'll die. I mean, let's be honest. The only reason they're still around is because they're cute. If they weren't cute, we would have let them go years ago. Need more convincing? Okay. They're not smart enough to keep their own kids alive. Seriously. It's very common when pandas have twins that they'll basically just pick one of them and let the other one die. That's a, that's a known thing they do. And the one they keep, they're prone to either sitting on it or rolling over on it or just forgetting they have a kid and letting it starve. That's why whenever a new cub is born in captivity, the caretakers take it away immediately because it's actually less safe with the mother than anywhere else. Oh, and they eat bamboo. I'm sorry, I, I said that wrong. They only eat bamboo. And you know what? As carnivores, they're not designed to eat. Bamboo. As Jacob Lentz, co-author of the book The Animal Review, says, quote, they're not supposed to eat bamboo. Their bodies are not adapted to digest cellulose, but they hang in there with a the bamboo. But the result of that is that they have to eat a ton of bamboo and they don't have a lot of energy to do things like, you know, mate. That could be nature kind of hinting around the fact that they should collectively shuffle off this mortal coil. Thank you. Do you have any idea the extreme efforts that zookeepers and conservationists have to go through to get these animals to perform the simple act of mating? I mean, we could be on Mars right now if we weren't spending so much time just trying to get these two bears to f each other. They're not that cute. Moving on. Turkeys. Everybody loves turkeys, especially around Thanksgiving. They are delicious, but they are not smart. So, so get this, this is one of the dumb things that it does. If it's raining, they'll stare up at the sky with their mouth open until they drown. Okay, the drowning thing is a little bit more of a myth, but the reason that they stare up at the rain is because of this inherited genetic condition that's called a titanic torticollar spasm. But they are still stupid. Like, like male turkeys have been known to basically hook up with headless female turkeys. So they're the opposite of pandas, basically. But maybe the dumb turkeys are our fault when it comes down to it. As Lentz wrote in the Animal Review blog, quote, in short, the turkey has gotten a bum rap, most of it due to people's decisions to domesticate a great number of them. These soft, sad birds are like obese teenagers who look lazy, shiftless, and weak. But the truth is that the fault lies with us. We gave them too many calories and stopped expecting them to toughen up or exercise, and then mock the result when we really are just angry with ourselves. Another bird that's considered to be five beers short of a six-pack is the ostrich. 
Ostriches are giant birds. If you've never been around one, they're just in, insane like, freaking dinosaurs. They can grow up to be 2.7 meters tall. That's nine feet tall. Weigh up to 136 kilograms and achieve a sustained speed of 65 kilometers per hour. That's 533 times faster than a sloth. Those slender legs that help it run fast are also weapons. Uh, a powerful kick from an ostrich can knock down huge attackers like lions, not to mention that giant, huge velociraptor claw at the end of their feet. And yet, despite being one of the fastest animals in the world, despite having that, their main defensive move when they get attacked is to uh, just lay down. So it's actually a misconception that ostriches bury their head in the sand, but they do put their heads on the ground and close their eyes, and it's thought that they do that because they think it makes them invisible. Yes, that invisible nine-foot-tall bird. If that theory is true, I guess they basically never develop object permanence? Which is something that human babies do at about eight months? I guess they think that if they can't see anything, then nobody can see them. I don't know, but it's, it's pretty dumb. Makes me think of the guy in Mystery Men who could turn invisible, but only when nobody was looking at him. Maybe you should put some shorts on or something if you want to keep fighting evil today. Next, let's talk about lemmings. Another animal that has a dumb fighting tactic is the Norwegian lemming. Or maybe they're just overconfident. Lemmings are known to attack other animals that are much bigger than them, and their only weapon is their teeth, making for very close combat, which is not good when you're a tiny little rodent. Now, you may think that they're stupid because they commit mass suicide by jumping off of cliffs. That is actually a myth that was perpetuated by Disney. Yes, you heard that right. Uh, Disney is responsible for the death of hundreds of lemmings. In a 1958 documentary titled White Wilderness, the filmmakers captured dozens of lemmings and they used Disney magic to make it seem like many more. And then they chased them off a cliff. Now, it's true that lemmings sometimes fall off of cliffs and drown during their migration season, but not altogether. Like, what they did was a complete fabrication. But like many myths that were created by Disney back in the heyday, uh, yeah, it stuck around, but it's not true. So that's a dumb myth. Busted! All right, so all of these animals are stupid in their own ways, um, especially compared to the superb human intellect. But one can only stand in awe at the king of dumb in the animal kingdom. It's the koala. Look, the koala is cute. That's nice, you know, but it literally has the lowest brain to body mass ratio of any mammal in the world. And this is actually a survival tactic because much like the pandas, their diet consists of one thing, one item, one item with very low caloric value. In their case, it's eucalyptus leaves. The Australian mammologist Tim Flannery had this to say about their brain, quote, its hemispheres sit like a pair of shriveled walnut halves on top of their brain stem and contact neither with each other nor the bones of the skull. Here's another thing about their brains. There's not a wrinkle in sight. Okay, so most of the processing that's done in the brain is actually done on the surface, and that's why ours have all those wrinkles and folds in it. It kind of provides more surface area. That's why calling somebody a smooth brain is an insult. Koala brains are literally smooth. They're so dumb that they only recognize these eucalyptus leaves when they're on the trees. So if you pluck them off the tree and offer it to them, they won't eat it. Even if they saw you pick it off the tree. And since eucalyptus is so low energy, it's all about energy conservation with these guys. To that end, they sleep 18 to 20 hours a day. That's most of the day. Actually, another thing about eucalyptus, it's not just low calorie, it's also toxic. So they have to spend a lot of extra amount of energy just digesting their food. They move slowly and they haven't adapted very well to cars or highways. And they seem to not know what rain is. Like a lot of animals will find some kind of shelter when it starts to rain, but not the koala. It just, it just sits there in the rain. They also don't seem to care about fire or maybe even know what it is. They've been known to be found sitting at the bottom of trees when bushfires approach, which is actually kind of sad when you think about those Australian wildfires a few years ago. Anyway, sympathy over it. They're also kind of assholes. They fight constantly, especially over territory, and each koala kind of insists on having a whole tree to themselves. Although, because of their low energy levels, their fighting is basically just whining and grappling. And get this, almost half of Australia's koalas have chlamydia. It is a different strain from the kind of chlamydia that humans know, but a koala can transmit it to you if it urinates on you. Which is a good reason not to walk under a tree with a koala in it. All right, now that I've picked on a bunch of cute defenseless animals, let's go back to my premise at the beginning of this video, which was all these animals are perfectly adapted for where they evolved. Their, their dumbness isn't a bug, it's a feature. Besides, who are we to judge? I mean, look at what we're doing and the problems we've caused. I mean, 
It makes me think of that joke about the aliens discovering that, you know, we've developed nuclear weapons and one alien asks the other one if they should be scared and the other alien says, no, they're pointing it at themselves. So yeah, intelligence is relative. One thing that is intelligent is eating fast, high quality meals from today's sponsor, Factor. It's the perennial debate, isn't it? You wanna eat something healthy, you wanna cook something with fresh ingredients instead of some processed garbage fast food, but you don't have a lot of time, so you eat the garbage. I'm guilty of it too. Factor is a nice little hack that lets you have it both ways. It's healthy because they're designed by nutritionalists, they're tasty because they're made by professional chefs, and it's fast because it only takes two minutes in a microwave. When you sign up, you have your choice of meal plans depending on what you're going for. Trying to be calorie conscious, they've got low calorie options. You go in keto, they've got that. Vegetarian, you veg your butt, they've got them. And let me just say real quick, as, as somebody who is on camera a lot, I, I pay a lot of attention to the, uh, let's just call it bulk that I carry around. And um, when I do get a factor box and I eat factor for a week, I can actually tell, I notice a difference in the mirror. I'm way hotter. Granted the bar set very low, but anyway. They've got 34 plus meals to choose from, so you're always likely to find something that you like. Plus they've got breakfast items, insanely good smoothies, and now a gourmet plus selection for the more discerning connoisseurs out there. By the way, something that doesn't get talked about very much is that they do offset 100% of their delivery emissions and use 100% renewable energy at their production sites. I know with delivery services, that's a concern for a lot of people and rightfully so, and they've addressed that, which is really cool. So look, I'm a fan of Factor. I'm an actual customer, so I do highly recommend them if you wanna try them. And if you wanna give them a try, they do have a special offer just for you. Just head over to factor75.com and enter the code JOESCOTT50. You'll get 50% off your first box. I think you'll be as surprised as I was the first time I tried it. It's worth checking out. So again, it's factor75.com, promo code JOESCOTT50. All that information is down in the description. Try it, I think you'll like it. And of course, thanks to Factor for supporting this video. Okay, so I'm actually here doing a live stream with my Patreon people. You can do that if you join at patreon.com slash answers with Joe. And uh, together we're gonna do the round one result, or sorry, round two results, quarterfinal matchups for uh, Sketch Madness. So there's three people that have gotten all of them correct so far. So there's, there's three people that are doing way better than me. There's 14 people that have done a little better than me. And there's 54 people that I think are, are right. No, they, they beat me too, yeah. So let's look at this first matchup. First matchup is the five worst cults of all time versus the top five weirdest reproductive organs in nature. Um, drum roll. And the winner is... Whoa! Okay, well, okay. Shockers right off the bat. <laughs> Shockers right off the bat. I actually, I actually thought that the cults win would win out over this one. That's pretty close. No, actually, it's not pretty close. 42 to 58%. You know what? After after last week, I I um, I gave up. I gave up on trying to predict. Moving on. <laughs> Deadly stripper land of the world. So that's the Panama Canal one versus the Venus one. Um, the people in the live stream can tell you I really struggle with this one. Let's see how much other people might have struggled with it. Drum roll, please. I think I just I think I got both of those wrong. I did, didn't I? I just got both of those wrong. I I would love to find out what it is about the Venus one that people like so much. Uh, the Phantom Pain one versus the Golden Ratio one. I struggle with this one as well for various reasons. But the winner is Golden Ratio. Okay. I actually did vote on that one, I believe. I got that one right. I did get that one right. Okay. All right, last but not least, we only had four this time, and this is the big one. I really have no clue how this is gonna go. Either one of these two I thought could win the whole thing, but we're in the quarterfinal round, and one of them's gonna go, and that one is, I'm actually kinda nervous about this one. <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay, ooh, that was close though, yeah. So I've been predicting this whole time that this one's gonna win the whole thing. So far, so good. But yeah, so the original clone video lost out to the million subscriber video. And uh, there you go. So I guess the matchups for next week, there's only two things to vote on next week. 
and that is the top five weirdest reproductive organs, so the penis designer video, versus the big million subscriber clone video, and then the Venus video versus the golden ratio video. So if you're watching this, um, please do go vote. It is thatjoescott.com slash madness. There's two more rounds. This one's only two votes. It'll take you no time at all. And, um, and we'll see which one comes out the big winner. Thank you for participating, everyone. <laughs> all right, big thanks to the Answer Files on Patreon and the channel members that are supporting this channel, helping to keep things afloat, keeping the lights on around here, making it possible for me to take a little bit of time to redo all of this in the way that it is now. So I want to thank some new people that showed up. We got some new Patreons. We've got Turtle in Jersey, LT Marshall, Carl Crutchfeld, Andrei Penite, I think, <laughs> Rebecca Wilson, William C. Hardy, Tom Fernkes, uh, Vince, Lewis Smith, and Aventines. Uh, thank you guys so much. If you'd like to join them, get early access to videos, exclusive live streams, and just be part of a really awesome community, uh, just go to patreon.com slash answers with Joe. Hey, like and share this video if you like it. And if this is your first time here, welcome. Thanks for joining. Um, you can maybe check out any of the little videos in the sidebar that have my little illustrated face in the thumbnails and whatnot. Go check them out. If you enjoy them, I invite you to subscribe. I'll come back with videos every Monday. All right, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. I go out there, have an eye-opening rest of the week, and I'll see you next Monday. Love you guys. Take care.